Welcome to this Symmetron webinar. My name is Michael and I work in tech support for Symmetron. This webinar is going to cover runners and gates. We're going to look at the commands and we're also going to look at some techniques to improve your use of the commands. At any point during the webinar, please uh, put any questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. You can see I have a core block and three sketches that I'm going to use to create runners. I'm going to start in the center with my runner part active and select project, pick that first sketch and pick the faces on the core that I want to project that curve onto. I can remove or keep that curve and I'll say OK. Next, I'm going to go to Runner Bodies, Curve Selected on Middle Button. Now you can see the different profiles I can use to create my runner. Uh, I'll select the circular or full round. And no matter what profile you use, it's just a matter of filling out the variables that they are showing you. In this case, I'm going to fill out A and B. I'm going to hit apply so I can see it before I get out of the command. If it looks good, I'll OK it. Next, uh, we're looking at, you can have a revolved end or flat ends. Uh, typically, we want a revolved end, but in another uh, example, we'll be using the flat end option. And then with the revolved end, you also have options about uh, if you want the radius to be at the end of the curve on edge on tip, or the center of the radius to be at the tip of the curve. I don't like to sketch a curve and then have to worry about the uh, taking the radius into consideration. So typically I use edge on tip. The last option that we're going to look at is cold wells. So it added them to the end of the cross runner, but the short ones do not have a cold well. So I can select uh, under option two cold well. Um, you could have a auto length that you predefine in preferences or I can have it on manual and then I can select the X's here to add the cold wells on the end of the short runners. Again they're manual so I can you know control them how I want. Once I'm good with it I can say OK. Each one of these Runners are independent or individual right now. Uh, I'm going to merge them. And now they're one. A couple options for cutting the runners in. I could use solid cut, do it to the core, do another solid cut to the cavity. Or I can utilize a cut by runner. I'm going to go cut by runner. It allows me to display any other components that the runner is running across. And in the command, I can pick all those components, in this case, the core and the cavity, middle button, select the runner. And one other option here is it says don't create curve. I can create a curve, which I'll let it do. And that curve can be used for machining the runner in if you didn't want to use the uh, surface data. So depending on, again, how you program or how you machine, um, if you didn't, didn't use the actual data and just wanted the curves, you can see that all the curves are made. Or if you needed them for mold flow, same idea. 
I don't want the curves, so I'm going to edit and say don't create curves, say OK. Okay, next uh, situation we're going to look at is going, going up a vertical face. Uh, that has caused a lot of issues for people to not end up using the runner command. Um, we will start like we did last time by projecting that curve, picking the faces, say OK. I will go into the runner bodies, curve selected. We will use the trap. I can give it the sizes I want. So A and B, included angle of 10, and then a radius. Okay. Now the issue that people come across is what you're seeing here, where the profile looks good at the top, looks good over here, but the transition is what's the issue. So instead of not using the command at all, I'm going to utilize it uh, as much as I can to minimize the work I have. And what the issue is, is that is this rad and this rad is what's causing the problem. If I edit my project and I unselect those two faces, I now have a curve that looks like this. And I can go to runner bodies, again, fill out fill out my sizes, take a look, and you can see that it handled those three separate sections, no problem. The one thing I'm going to do here again to utilize the strength of the command is I'm going to instead of revolved go to flat and say OK and now my only issue is what I'm going to do in these areas so to, basically to get from this runner to this runner I'm going to use solid loft solid loft allows me to pick two faces with option one being to add tangency to complete that runner. Okay. Now I can add some rads or rounds. And now I can merge it together. And I have one continuous runner now. And again, I can use the cut by runner Turn that guy off and you can see that nice consistent depth and flow between all those different sections. The last uh, uh, situation we're going to look at is I want a full round runner, but I'm going across a heavily angled face that's going to cause me undercuts. So let's uh, create the round runner to start with and see the situation that we get when uh, using a full round runner in this area. Okay, and then I can do a cut by runner. 
I'm just going to cut the one side for our needs just to show you what we're trying to avoid. And you can see that one side has an undercut, the other side is good. Okay. Quite simply, it's just geometry of cutting that hem coming that cutting that hemisphere or that diameter on an angle part of it is going to have to go undercut the other side will be uh, open so what we do to get past this again utilizing the the command rather than you know working hard is we will again pick that curve this time I'm going to use the parabolic and Sorry, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, and we'll make this angle extremely small. All I want to do is to make sure it's not undercut. Okay, I make that runner. I look at it, you can see that it didn't come up high enough so I'm simply going to go extend linear and up let's go point 0.1 okay that looks good enough Okay, and again, I'll bring back this curve. And this first one we made was for the core. The second runner we're going to make will end up being for the cavity. And again, uh, the same values. Same included angle. Difference is going to be I'm going to flip the arrow so it's now on this side. And I'll say OK to that. And while this is here, I'm going to go cut my runner. Make sure I pick the right one. And let's hide this guy. Oops, make that active. And Let's hide the core block. And again, I'm just going to do a solid extend. Okay. Turn this guy on, say, cut by runner. And now if I do a analysis, I can see that that is open. This is all open. And the same thing on the core. And again, flip the arrow. And I see this is all open. Okay, 
The one thing I will show you that's the compromise for it being uh, open is uh, let's drag that over a bit. There we go. And you will end up with a slight overlap of the runner. But again, that's the trade-off dealing with the way that the surface bisects the diameter. Okay. Now we're going to look at gate design. My runner part's active again. We're going to go into mold design, gate design. We're going to start with an edge gate and different options we can pick. I'm going to go point and direction. I'm going to pick the center of the runner. And right now it's looking for active faces for the gate to go towards. In the active faces, the attributes translated to the faces using cut active. Center of spine just shows it'll be half in the core, half in the cavity. If I flip that to bottom, it'll be all in the cavity. And in our case, I want it all in the core, so I'll say top. You can have a draft angle if you wanted on the sides of the, the gate. Or no draft, again, depending what you what you want there. And now I can fill out the blue for the beginning. And make that the same width as the runner. And then the front part. And now I can make the length of that, if I want it the same as a runner, I could, or if I want it more of a fan gate, I can make it wider. I'm going to pull this back because I want to have a nice land. So let's pull that back 80 thou. Actually, I didn't put a minus in front, so let's key in the proper to pull it back. We can say yes. You can see it's not going all the way through the faces. So I'm just going to do an extend object on that top 10 thou. And we're good there. I'm going to do a solid extend to get my gate in, into the part. And I'll make sure that it breaks all the way through. Looks good. And add it to the gate itself. Turn off the core and add some rounds. Add some rounds. Variable. And that and the other side okay so that's our edge gate so you can see it looks pretty good Moving on, we're going to do a tunnel gate. And again, mold design, gate design, tunnel gate. We're going to use the uh, point and direction again. Uh, I'm going to pick the center. So again, it's looking for active faces. The angle's too steep to hit the uh, to hit the rib, 
So I'm going to change that. You can also see that this is on top of spine. I want it in the middle. I'd also like it to be circular. And with this as a fan, so it's using the start diameter. And I give it an angle. It'll make the back part. Uh, again, in my case, I prefer to go by diameters little more control and 375 right now you can see it's a squared off end if I wanted it round it would add a ball on the end in my case I don't want that squared off And whoops, you can see that it's right at the center, breaks through nice. Okay, so that is the tunnel gate. Also, if I want, I can increase the back end to make sure when I cut the uh, gate in, it washes out nice. I'm going to do another tunnel gate just with a different option and in this case instead of using point and direction I'm going to use selected curve again change this to diameter 0.375 and if I look at the side view you can see that because my line went past the ejector pin hole, it's a little too deep. So I can just simply pull it back 10 thou, and now it hits right where I'd like it to hit. Okay, so that's by curve. We're going to look at another gate. And this one's going to be the curved tunnel gate, otherwise known as a cashew gate or a banana gate. Change that to by diameter. And I'm going to use two points. So I'm going to pick the center of the runner, the midpoint of this. And now it's sensing based on my entry angle. Uh, hit the part. Again, I'll adjust the diameters here. And what I want there. And you can see it's a little shallow, but again, we can we can change that uh, by changing the entry angle. So now it's a. Uh, you can see the arc is getting tighter. Try that, and once I get the arc I like, I can say OK. I want to back this off because I want to build my vestige into my part. And I can say OK to that. I'm going to use Sketcher to build my vestige. I want to get a reference point at center of geometry of this face and now I can pick a diameter extrude that make sure it hits through the part add some taper to it whatever you wanted and I can also now if I don't like where this is hitting per se I could use my vector and move it a little to get it into a better position. I'm going to add it to this and then I'm going to add a round.
that's not behaving right so let's go here there and there and we'll say okay to that and there i have a nice cashew gate with uh, a pretty strong vestige that should break nice and clean so uh, next one we're going to look at is a cashew gate this time it's going across this these angled faces I'm going to select cashew gate by diameter again two points and I made this curve ahead of time so I'd have be able to define the point and you can see it remembers um, some of the variables here. Uh, in this case, I want it to be a rectangular. If I wanted it to be in the cavity for whatever reason, even the tunnel gate, I could flip that and it would go the other side, okay? Gonna make some adjustment to sizes. Okay, and again, I pulled it back 80 thou. So we're going to say okay to that. I'm going to add some rounds. And I'm going to go back to the first one. Go back to the first one here and update that. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to rotate this gate so that it is closer to parallel with the bottom of my part. Something like that. We're going to build our vestige again on top of here again using the center geometry to get a center point adding a rectangle sizing this sizing this And now I'm going to rotate it. Radial array. Okay, so right about there, or yeah, it's probably better. And I'll say OK. And now I can extrude that guy until he breaks through let's go a little bit deeper and add some taper until I'm pretty happy with it again I'm going to add it to 
this guy. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this guy by Now he's eh, a little more. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to add a round. All good. And rounds. And there we go. Last gate we're going to look at would be used for a three plate. And that would be a direct gate. So I'm just going to go point and direction again. I'm going to pick the center point. So this could be used for a three plate or it could be used for a prototype where you don't have screw bushing. Uh, again, when I went point and direction, it found the active faces. Again, I'm going to change that to diameters 0.75 maybe 0.25 something like that and then just like I did with uh, the cashew gate I can back this off and then I would create my vestige on the end of that into my part. This is option two for that uh, gate that's on an angled face where the part edge is on an angle. And I don't want to create a pocket that uh, needs five axis to cut the inserts for it for the gate. So what I'm going to do, or what I have done, is I've made a plane that's parallel to this face. I've offset it 80 thou. And now I'm just going to do a solid cut. Say OK to that. It's going to do a remove and extend for this little piece here. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to sketch her. I'm going to pick that plane. Actually, I'm going to make it in the part area, and I'm going to size it the way I want. So my actual gate size. And now I can rotate this guy a bit. Till... You know, it's pretty parallel to uh, the part. Uh, at this point, I can do an extrude. And I want to make sure the vector's in the direction I want. I'm going to go down to this face. And now I can take this and start angling it. do how I want. So let's go like 240. And we'll back him off just a bit. We'll say OK. We want some draft on there. Okay. 
And I can say OK to that. Forgot one thing to add it to my runner. And we'll add some rounds. So that's all good. This and this. And that's all good. So again, that's another way we can do that cashew gate on this angled face. And we've got a nice constant land and we can insert it like we normally would. That wraps up our webinar for today. Uh, you can visit our website at www.symmetron.com. Uh, if you're in North America, you can contact us at support-us at symmetron.com. And if you'd like to contact us by phone, you can reach us at 877 596-9700, extension 1.